Please join me as we hear from Dr. David Satcher, our 16th U.S. Surgeon General and former U.S. Assistant Secretary for Health, as well as Dr. Aletha Maybank, the AMA's very own Chief Health Equity Officer, for some important timely words related to health equity in our nation. Greetings. As you graduate today, I think it is fair to say that these are not the best of times. You know, over the last three months, almost 300,000 people have died from COVID-19, 75,000 of them in the United States. These are not the best of times, but we have to be prepared, even in the worst of times, to move forward and to continue to contribute to making the world a better place. In January 2000, I served as Surgeon General of the United States and Assistant Secretary for Health. It was in that capacity that I led the development of Healthy People 2010. And from that development, hopefully you remember, we made a commitment to the elimination of disparities in health. It was a solid goal, sincere, and yet we have not reached that goal. In no way has that become more apparent than in the last few months as we've struggled with COVID-19, this outbreak of a virus that has found all kinds of ways to outsmart us. So today I challenge you that even in what may seem like the worst of times, you hold true to your commitment and to our commitment to eliminate disparities in health and to achieve health equity. You've worked hard to get to this day. Also, there are others who've worked hard, like your parents and your faculty, but there's still much work to do and I hope today as you leave that you will care enough to get the job done, that you now know enough to move forward and to continue to learn, that you will have the courage to do what needs to be done, and finally that you will persevere until a job is done. As you leave here today, Godspeed, and may you receive the blessings you are due. Hello and congratulations, class of 2020. You know, to be a physician is a tremendous privilege not afforded to many. The privilege to enter people's lives who are absolute strangers in which they hand over their keys to vulnerability and trust, trust that you are going to always do the best that you can do to promote and protect their health and well-being. I remember the time of finishing medical school like it was yesterday, but clearly it was not. It was like 20 years ago and it was the start of a new millennium. You know, Dr. David Satcher was the 16th Surgeon General at the time, and I remember him well as he launched Healthy People 2010. And I heard this idea of eliminating health disparities for the first time. About a year after med school, we had a major deadly disaster that entered this country in New York City. 9-11 forever altered how we viewed the world and it changed our way of life much in the way that COVID-19 has and will continue doing so. You know, Dr. David Satcher's vision of eliminating inequities didn't happen in 2010. And COVID-19, our newest public health crisis, reminds us that these inequities, these injustices are ever present, they're entrenched, and are a result of generations of policies that structure discrimination into the very systems that are to make us whole such as housing and transportation, education, employment, and healthcare. And so over the coming months and years, the US medical system will struggle to adapt to new post-pandemic norms. This new day calls upon all of you to know and understand what creates health more broadly beyond the halls and walls of the healthcare system, the hospitals and doctor's offices, and understand how larger political, historical, structural, social, and cultural contexts in which we all live impact our patients' health, your health, and the health of your loved ones. You know, I truly believe you will need to embrace joining medical care and public health 
in ways that facilitate system building that aligns the two fields instead of segregating them. You will have the opportunity to reimagine, dismantle, redesign, and reconstruct the healthcare and public health system through a vision that reclaims a much broader understanding of health. It centers health, racial, and social justice, humanizes yourselves, affirms human rights, and embraces joy. You know, health is political, and the United States response to COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the need for medicine to have an explicit political voice. Doing so means that we are gonna to have to expand our public voice and partner with folks in traditional media as well as in social media and on their platforms. Health will also require our voices in the halls of Congress and in state and local and government offices. And we will need to use our voice by voting. You know, in 1970, the author James Baldwin wrote in an open letter to Angela Davis, a civil rights activist who was jailed at the time, a time that was also viewed to be an absolute chaos. Since we live in an age in which silence is not only criminal, but suicidal, I have been making as much noise as I can. I truly look forward to the leadership of your class and generation. Many of you have already been leading and using your voices to advocate for change, social justice, a better America, a better health system. And I just encourage you to continue doing so and to encourage your physician colleagues to do the same. So congratulations. And I hope you find some fun ways to enjoy this hashtag COVID celebration time. Wishing you the best in life. Congratulations again and take care.